Hey there and welcome back. My name is Chris, an Aussie GP, and today I'm going to be talking to you about boosting your immune system. Now, if you've been here a few times or watched any of my videos, you may know that my mantra is pretty much, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. But don't click off just yet, please. Instead of just being like, hey guys, we can't boost your immune system, see ya. I thought it'd be nice to actually walk you through what your immune system is, why we don't boost it, but ways that you can support it. If you're interested, keep watching. Ah, the immune system. It is an excessively complex system mediated by different chemicals, which in turn essentially protect your body and its function. The organs involved in your immune system are, well, all of them, but mostly things like bone marrow, your spleen, and your thymus. The immune system is absolutely essential for the survival of our being, right? Its main job is to fight off invaders such as infections like parasites, bacteria, viruses. And without it, we get sick and die. So I get it. I get why people want to boost it, right? Why people want to make sure that it's in tip-top fighting shape. But like I alluded to before, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Every single day, we are assaulted by pathogens in the air, on our skin, in the food we eat, everything. But Typically, we don't get sick and die, and this is all thanks to our immune system. Our bodies have a very intricate system, supported by several types of different cells, all responsible for our immune responses to things. Basically, our body is absolutely fantastic at recognising foreign substances or entities. When our body recognises something foreign, cells, such as our B lymphocytes, will attach to it and secrete different chemicals alerting the rest of the immune system that something has entered our body. Now, this chemical reaction doesn't actually kill these pathogens per se, but it marks it for death, <laughs> which sounds really cool and really brutal. For any of my medical buddies watching, what I'm talking about is your immunoglobulins, IgG, IgM, IgE, this is what's binding. The whole role of these bound immunoglobulins is to attract killer cells, so your T lymphocytes. As the name suggests, this is where everything gets really interesting. It's not just the T lymphocytes, mind you, but they do help coordinate the immune response. And depending on the type of pathogen, different things will happen. This is not going to be a virology or an immunology video, mind you. So if you're really interested in all of that, please do go forward and find more, I guess, up-to-date information. I'm a general practitioner and I did learn all of this at one stage and I did understand it. But my mind's kind of taken up by more passionate things for my current career, if that makes sense. Until the moment you die, your immune system is active. Now, you don't have to kickstart it, right? It doesn't go to sleep. And if it does, there's probably something really wrong going on, but I digress. So if you're thinking of doing things like drinking lemon water in the morning to kickstart your immune system or drinking lots of celery juice, I mean, that's all great and fine if you actually like the taste but it's not really gonna do much. So, save your money, save your teeth. I hear lemon juice can be very acidic, but again, not a dentist. <laughs> and just know that your immune system is working nonstop, every day until the day you ultimately pass. So, interestingly, just like our brains, our immune system has memory. This means that if you are exposed to the same pathogen again, so the same type of infection or whatnot, your body can amount that same immune response so much faster, which means you typically get over it a lot quicker. And sometimes you don't even have signs that you had an infection. So with all this in mind, it does sound like a good idea to boost it, right? Who wouldn't want to fight bacteria, viruses, parasites, etc. better? Again, sadly, it's not all that simple. There are for sure conditions where immune systems don't work the way that they are designed. So immunodeficiencies is usually what we're talking about, and these can be in all sorts of different scenarios. For example, AIDS, or Acquired Immunodeficiency Disorder, or syndrome, is one of them, where you're acquired, so you got something, which is in this case HIV, which causes an immunodeficiency. Other causes of a decreased immune response are things like cancers, and even some treatments for diseases, like being on long-term steroids or going back to cancers, radiation and chemotherapy. There are lots of things that can reduce your immune response though, and that doesn't necessarily have to be a disease. But smoking, being obese, not getting enough exercise, and not eating enough nutrient-rich foods can actually decrease your immune response. 
So, and it's a little bit of a spoiler alert, but it is more important to me as a general practitioner and as, as a doctor to encourage these behaviors versus boosting with like a potion or a powder. But anyway, we'll get there, I do promise. <laughs> So on the flip side, your immune system can be so active and so good at its job, but it stops recognizing foreign and attacks anything. These are conditions known as autoimmune disorders. So auto, meaning like your own tissue, immune, like your immune system, and disorders, meaning obviously a disorder. So autoimmune disorders include things like celiac disease, Graves' disease, which is hypothyroidism, or alternatively, Hashimoto's, which is hypothyroidism. It also includes things like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Not only that, but our immune system can be so active or boosted as it were, that you develop allergies to things that normally your immune system wouldn't really look at. At the worst end of the spectrum, this can cause things like anaphylaxis or a deadly allergic reaction. And this is all mediated by your immune system. So can these immune boosting supplements that I kind of alluded to harm you? Shorter answer is meh, probably not, but if you're interested, I do have a whole video about that. Spoiler alert, again, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. <laughs> but yeah, essentially some supplements can harm you. A lot of the times they can't, but it's because of the lack of regulation that I'm really wary about people taking things like immune boosters and whatnot. Now I do get some evidence I am going to read so I don't butcher anything. But a common question is, okay, so maybe they harm you, but will they help you? It's all risk benefit, right? Well, it was really hard to find any studies looking into things that could boost your immune system. And what I did find was about the use of elderberries to try and boost the immune system to recover from an influenza A infection. So in this study, it was pretty promising, saying that on average, symptoms disappeared four days quicker. And I don't know if you've ever had influenza A, I have, four days <laughs> that sounds like a lifetime sign me up problem is this was only limited to 60 people that is not a big enough study to eliminate bias there was a second study i found um showing d2 but it was only in 52 patients and they didn't even see a really good benefit there so essentially more research is needed so that's all well and good but what's the takeaway the takeaway here is your immune system is complicated. There are no quality studies indicating that you can boost it by any means. There is good evidence, however, that lifestyle choices, getting enough sleep, eating nutritious food, being active, keeping your weight in a healthy range, not smoking, not in having too much alcohol, that is what supports good immune function. There's also excellent evidence that not having a super immune system is actually in your best benefit. Um, lest you get an autoimmune condition. Now that's an oversimplification and I don't want to make it sound like anyone with an autoimmune condition did anything wrong. These are often hereditary and genetic. So please, if you have an autoimmune condition, you didn't do anything wrong. I'm just explaining that it's likely and very much linked to an overactive immune system, not that you were doing anything wrong. So if you're interested in learning more about detoxes and supplements and their possible harms, I do have two videos on that. But otherwise, guys, basically look after yourself and your immune system will do the rest. If you're feeling up to it, like, subscribe and comment. I'm really interested in putting out more videos like this and tell me what you're interested in. But until then, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you later. Bye.